We want to be successful. But what is success? Bill Gates, according to Forbes magazine, is the richest person in the world. He's worth $43.7 billion. <laughs> That's more than I earn, right? <laughs> and then you have the late Mother Teresa of Calcutta, who died penniless, and when she died, all she had was a chip tin enamel mug and a threadbare cotton sari. Who's more successful? They're equally successful, because success, the best definition of success I've ever heard in my life is success is the realization of your goal. Whatever your goal and aspiration is, upon its realization, you're successful. So the first lesson I learned was this. The thing that stops most people being successful is they're afraid. They're afraid they're going to fail. They're afraid they're going to look bad. They're going to afraid they're going to walk in this stage and stammer, stutter, and fail. They're afraid they're going to get cancer, they're going to break the neck, they're not going to find love. They're afraid, they're afraid, they're afraid. Let me tell you, 99% of the things you're afraid of are not going to happen. And when they do happen, you'll cope with them. The question I get asked more than any other question in the world is this question. Robin, how do I motivate my son to stay at school? How do I motivate my clients to buy from me? How do I motivate myself to get fit? Motivation is really much studied and little understood, but this much is known. The number one motivator to the average person in the world is the need to be appreciated. Number two is the need to feel involved. And as you go through life, as I've discovered to myself, the need to be appreciated of, your, of yourself and others is going to be critical to your self-development and your self-image. Let me ask you a question. Who was your favorite teacher at school? Think of your favorite teacher at high school. I'm going to ask you five questions with this person. Number one, were they passionate and enthusiastic about the subject they taught? Did they bring it to life? Number two, when you got something right, did they say, well done? Number three, when you got something wrong, were they empathetic? And understanding, question four, did you like them? Question five, did they like you? And the answer to those five questions is yes, 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 and yes. And yet, 30 years later, if I looked you in the eye and said, what did this teacher say that made them so wonderful? You look at me and go, Robin, it was 30 years ago. It was geography, I can't remember. But I said, well, what did this teacher do that was so wonderful? You look at me and go, well, they threw chalk at me now and again, but I can't remember. But 30 years later, if I ask you, how did this person make you feel? You still remember. People forget what you say and people forget what you do. People never forget how you make them feel. As a speaker with responsibilities, remember that. How you make people feel is a legacy and what they'll remember. My father was a doctor in Glasgow, a single-handed general practitioner, a family doctor. He worked by himself. He had 2,200 patients. He worked six days a week. On the seventh day of the week, my father, who was a scratch golfer and played in the British Amateur Championship, would pay another locum. He'd pay a doctor to look after his patients. At the age of 52, my father went to bed, had a massive stroke, and he died. I had five sisters and myself. We couldn't afford holidays. Life wasn't super tough, but it wasn't easy for us. And my father died at the age of 52, and I was very upset for one major reason. My father had never been successful. He had never owned a new car in his entire life. My father bought his clothes in the January sales. His golf club set would be renewed every five years if he could afford it. And he went to bed and he died. And I was bitterly upset. I was 19 years of age. Three days later, I went to the funeral and the church was very full. You see, my father worked in a poor part of town, a deprived part of town. And in the church, there were people dressed in a manner of people who suffer social deprivation. And when the church service was over, people were leaving, and some of them spoke to my mother. And when they spoke to my mother, I never knew what they said. But years later, I asked my mom, hey, what were these people saying? She said, Robin, they were telling me stuff about your dad I didn't know. One fellow said on a winter's night, your father appeared at their door with a bag of coal because he knew they were unemployed and they had no money. Another man turned up at my father's funeral wearing the gloves we'd given him that winter for his Christmas present. An old lady said once a month on a Friday at 3 o'clock, my father would come to her house to have tea and ginger cake she would bake for him. I realized then my father was very wealthy because my father had the second principle, which was this. He had passion and purpose. In your life, you need a purpose behind your speech. You need a purpose to be on a stage other than an egotistical need to be heard. You need to have purpose to help people find their direction and find their way in life and be passionate about it.